Henry Cavill had his final send-off in this season of The Witcher and there was so much more that the writers could have done to make it an epic send-off rather than the one he had. Season 3 opens with Geralt, Yennefer and Ciri moving from place to place as they are on the run from everyone that is after Ciri. Yennefer is training Ciri to become a powerful mage and Geralt still hasn't forgiven Yennefer for her betrayal in Season 2. So, they begin by communicating through letters as Yennefer slowly regains Geralt's trust. Hey guys, welcome back to the TV Recap Show. In this video, I will be breaking down Henry Cavill's final season as The Witcher. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, but let's get right into it. Whilst moving from place to place, they settle down in a snowy location with the protection of Yarpen and his crew. Rience is still on the hunt for Ciri as he uses a Jackapace monster to help him, using the scent of Ciri's blood. Francesca and her people are still on the hunt for Ciri as she still believes that Ciri can help them to dull Bathana, but her people are starting to doubt her. Francesca partners with the Scoia'sel army, but their leader believes that joining with Nilfgaard is the best option. However, Francesca doesn't believe that humans and elves can coexist peacefully. There is a power struggle between the two leaders. In Redania, King Vizimir is not happy that Dijkstra and Philippa haven't found Ciri yet, so he orders his brother Radovid to help them. Something to note here is that in the books, Radovid was Vizimir's son, but in the series, he is Vizimir's brother. At a party, the Jacopace finds Ciri, and the three manage to fight it off. However, they figured that their enemies have Ciri's blood, so it would be difficult to outrun them. Instead, they want to create a trap, making it seem like Ciri is alone, so when their enemies find them, they will be caught off guard. Enter Yaskir with his new look. He is found by Philippa and Radovid as they try to convince him to bring Ciri to Redania, because she will be safe there. Radovid and Yaskir form a small connection as Radovid is a big fan of Yaskir. Shortly after, Yaskir reunites with the trio as they form a plan to lure out their enemies, with Jaskir being the bait. As expected, Rience comes for Ciri and a huge fight kicks off. Rience creates a portal using dark magic that Yennefer has never seen before. During the fight, the elves arrive and join the fight to capture Ciri. Geralt breaks Rience's hands and Francesca loses her brother. In the aftermath, Yennefer realises that she needs to train Ciri harder, so she plans to take her to Aratuza, hoping to gain the Brotherhood's trust back and to train Ciri. This is where Geralt parts ways with Yennefer and Ciri as he is off to hunt down Rience. Ciri begins to have visions of people dying. Yennefer advises her to be careful with what she says as it can change destiny. Geralt and Yasuke visit Codringer and Fenn to get information on Rience. They are told to go to Vulpan. Geralt goes alone, leaving Yaskir away from harm. Ciri is frustrated that she can see the future but cannot change it. Yennefer lectures her on the importance of discretion and Ciri thinks that Yennefer is living life easily because she can easily control her magic. However, this is not the case as Yennefer takes Ciri to where she was born, explaining the struggle that she went through. At Aratuza, Stragobor wants to kill Ciri, but Tissaia and Triss disagree and Vilgefortz backs them up. In Redania, Philippa and Dijkstra have an intimate moment which involved whips. She thinks that Radovid is smarter than he lets on, as he's flirting away with Yaskir. Rience shows up at Codringer and Fens and burns the whole place apart. He does save the cat though. Fringilla is alive and is a poison tester in Sintra as punishment by Amir. She manages to escape. Kahir is also alive and he's been sent out on many missions by Amir as punishment. He meets Gaetin, the Scoia'tael leader, and they become allies. At Vulpan, Geralt encounters a monster that is made up of young girls who have been experimented on. One survivor, who looked like Ciri, introduced herself as Ciri to Geralt. She believes that she is Princess Cirilla of Sintra. Her real name is in fact Terin. Geralt takes Terin to a healer that could help Terin remember who was experimenting on her. When Terin wakes up, all she can remember is a woman with a funny voice. Yennefer and Ciri arrive in Gore's Velen. Yennefer leaves Ciri with a chaperone while she goes to meet Tissaia and seeks forgiveness from the rest of the council after her betrayal in season 2. Ciri reunites with Yennefer along with Tissaia and other mages from Aratuza. They bring Ciri to Aratuza where she learns that being a mage is not easy. She also didn't like the idea of being under the supervision of power hungry women, so she and Yennefer have a fight over this. Dijkstra and Philippa want to turn Vizimir against Nilfgaard, so they execute his wife, Queen Hedwig. Radovid knows it was Dijkstra who did this, but they threaten Radovid so he keeps his mouth shut. Emir wants to ally with Francesca and the elves, but Gaetin wants to ally with Emir. However, Emir thinks that Gaetin is headstrong and disruptive, so he orders Kahir to kill him. A bit of a random scene where Ciri is running away from Aratuza as she's being chased by the wild hunt. Geralt is there to save her, and a piece of the rider's armor remains, 
meaning that the Wild Hunt is real and not a dream, but we don't see any more of the Wild Hunt this season, maybe in season 4. Emir invites Kahir back by his side, and when Kahir asks about Fringilla, he thinks that she is dead. Yennefer makes her case in front of the Brotherhood, proposing a conclave to create a strong united front among the Northern Kingdoms against Nilfgaard. Stregobor isn't happy with Yennefer's return, and he makes it known, but with the support of Tissaia of Vilgefort, the other mages agree to Yennefer's plan. Meanwhile, Triss and Istrid realise that the Book of Monoliths is missing, which has information about banishing elven-blooded people. Philippa and Dijkstra have an idea as to who Rience is working for, but continue scheming until they can know for certain. Ciri, Geralt and Yaskir make their way to Aratuza via a ferry, where they encounter a sea monster. Ciri takes the lead in this fight and manages to kill it with skill, although this fight was a little underwhelming. Jennifer crashes Queen Hendwig's funeral and invites Philippa to the conclave. When Jennifer tries to portal back to Aratuza, she somehow ends up in an illusion where Geralt tries to kill her. This magic was dark, and it was like the magic that Rience used to make his portals. Geralt, Ciri and Yaske meet up with Yennefer. Ciri and Yennefer immediately make amends, and Geralt leaves with Yennefer to prepare for the conclave. This leaves Yaskir to watch over Ciri overnight. However, when Ciri falls asleep, Yaskir notices something outside and wanders outside to find Radovid, having escaped from his security. They finally act on their sexual tension. It is quite irresponsible of Yaskir to leave Ciri alone though, in the woods, Kahir catches up with Francesca and her army. He convinces her to team up with him and Amir. After more corrupted portals, Triss and Istred meet and realise that whoever is messing with dark magic is in Aratuza. They locate the Book of Monoliths back to Stregobor's safe. Geralt and Yennefer discuss the portals and Yennefer's illusions, and conclude that it is Stregobor that is behind all of this because he hates elves and uses illusions. Episode 5 is a very confusing and repetitive episode. We get to see what happened at the ball in Aratuza. Geralt and Yennefer get very close, and Geralt even admits to a Yennefer that he loves her. In flashbacks, we see how the night played out at the ball. Geralt and Istred stage a fight to distract Stregobor, whilst Yennefer sneaks into Stregobor's room. Stregobor then confronts Yennefer, but when Geralt and the Brotherhood Council intervene, Stregobor is blamed for the corrupt portals and the experimenting on young girls. He is detained. Little did they know that he is not actually the one behind it all. Later, Geralt and Yennefer are talking about the things they notice at the ball, such as Lydia, a mage that can only communicate telepathically, reminding Geralt about Terran and the woman with the funny voice. Also, Yennefer found Tissaia's bracelet that Vilgefortz had given her, which was made of scarlet ammonite. Geralt found Terran near a scarlet ammonite mine. And finally, the corrupted portal took Yennefer to the first landing, and earlier that episode, Vilgefortz told Geralt that his favourite painting was of the first landing. They realised that they were wrong to blame Stregobor, but it was Vilgefortz that was behind it all. It also turns out that Philippa and Dijkstra had figured it out, and Philippa tried to warn Yennefer, but she didn't understand the warning. Geralt runs out of their room as he can hear screaming and shouting, but he is stopped by Dijkstra as he holds a knife to his throat. They both want the same thing, to take down Vilgefort, so they are actually working towards a common goal. Dijkstra and the Redanian soldiers have rounded up most of the Brotherhood and mages in their way. Yennefer managed to escape. Vilgefortz is among the mages that have been captured, but Tissaia lets them all free. This was a mistake because this led to a huge fight. During the fighting, Geralt tries to leave and find Ciri, but Dijkstra stops him. Geralt manages to easily get past him. Lydia tries to kill Yennefer in the tunnels beneath Aratuza, but Triss saves her. Radovid slips past Yaskir to find Ciri, but by the morning, Ciri had escaped. Yaskir catches Radovid, trying to find Ciri, and he is disappointed. Ciri and Yennefer reunite and Rience is on their tail. Just as he is about to attack, Geralt comes to the rescue and takes his head off in style. Vilgefortz reveals himself as the traitor and lets the North Guardian and Skoyatel army into the attack. A massive fight takes place with many mages, elves and North Guardians dying. Tissaia summons a last resort thunder spell. Yennefer realises that Tissaia is summoning the spell and it could kill her, so she leaves Ciri with Geralt, calling Ciri her daughter before leaving. When Yennefer arrives back at Aratuza, she faces off against Francesca, but just in time, Stregobor comes using fire magic as he is eager to kill the elves. Ciri and Geralt come face to face with Cahir, but Cahir doesn't want to fight, only to serve Ciri and beg for forgiveness. Geralt finds Vilgefortz and they have an epic battle. Unfortunately, Vilgefortz was too strong and left Geralt with broken bones all over, unable to move. Her magic is so powerful that she accesses a portal which she enters and disappears, leaving the tower to explode and collapse. Vilgefortz doesn't seem dead. 
Yennefer finds Tissaia along with other mages and they escape. Geralt was taken to Brokilon to heal because he was too weak to heal himself. He was prepared to die because he assumed Ciri was lost. Ciri's portal had taken her to the middle of the desert. Ciri met a unicorn but she's suffering and starts hallucinating. A mysterious woman appears named Falca. Falca seems to be trying to help Ciri tap into her powers. For reference, Falca was a power hungry maid that started a rebellion when her father, an older Redanian king, rejected her elven heritage. Ciri passes out and is found by a group of bounty hunters who want to take her to Amir. Yasuke goes to find Geralt to comfort and encourage him to get better, informing him that Ciri is alive and has been kidnapped and she is on the way to Nilfgaard. Fringilla and Francesca arrive in Nilfgaard and meet Amir. Amir wants to ally with Francesca, but wants to keep the Scoia'tael army to himself, whereas Francesca can rule over only the elder elves in Sintra. Later, Fringilla informs Francesca that Emir killed her child and Francesca wants revenge. At Aratusa, Yennefer speaks with Tissaia. Tissaia writes a letter to Yennefer and commits suicide because she blamed herself for the coup and everything that happened with Vilgefort. King Vizimir is pissed at Dijkstra for not holding up his end of the bargain and wants to make an example out of Philippa. Radovid convinces his brother to set him free and become his own person. Vizimir is with Philippa as he tries to convince her to kill Dijkstra. At this point she knew she could trust Dijkstra. Then Philippa's handmaid comes and kills Vizimir. Unfortunately for Radovid, Vizimir's death now means that he is the new king, which is not at all what he wanted, meaning it will be difficult for him to be with Yaskir now. Geralt tries to get better. He does some training to get back into shape before leaving with Yaskir. Geralt encounters some Nilfgaardians and fights them. He leaves the lead soldier alive to send a message to Emir that Geralt is coming for Ciri. This was the last we will see of Henry Cavill as the Witcher. Little did Geralt know that Terin, the fake Ciri, had gone to Nilfgaard along with Vilgefortz. Emir doesn't know that she's the fake Ciri. The real Ciri is with the bounty hunters at a tavern where she meets one of the rats who helps her escape. More rats come to help Ciri kill the bounty hunters. The final scene shows Ciri announcing herself to the rats as Falca. What do you think of Henry Cavill's final episode and what do you think will happen to Ciri in season 4? Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.